Hello, and welcome to another FPSC video. Today we're going to be looking at the just released No More Heroes 3 on Nintendo Switch. This is the latest and seemingly final game in the No More Heroes franchise which originally launched on the Wii in 2007, and the second new entry on the Switch after 2019's Travis Strikes Again. Utilizing Unreal Engine 4, No More Heroes 3 is targeting an ambitious 60fps during gameplay. How well does it hold up? Let's explore together and, in an FPS you first, we'll be looking at both docked and handheld footage. No More Heroes has been known for its distinctive, high contrast visuals and those have translated faithfully to this new Unreal Engine game. The game features angular, bold shapes, often leaning into more surreal or comic book-like visuals with its strong cell shading. The game makes use of many of Unreal's features like temporal anti-aliasing and what appears to be a dynamic resolution solution. Textures can range from anywhere between highly detailed like on the game's excellent character models to some very low resolution assets that leave a lot to the imagination. The game features more detailed linear sections as well as a semi-open world segmented by loading screens, which shows off some quite sparse environmental detail. Low resolution cube map or static slash pre-baked reflections are used in certain areas, such as on this shiny floor here, and when combined with the game's very low grade texture filtering, it can sometimes look pretty blurry. Take a look at these buildings in the background for example, it's just not aesthetically pleasing. Overall then, it's a mixed bag, there are some striking visual elements, but the overall image is let down in quite a few areas. Something that doesn't help is the game's relatively low resolution. While in docked mode, the game appears to hover between 720p and 756p, so not reaching the Switch's maximum output resolution of 1080p, but seemingly rarely dipping below 720p. While exploring the game's open world, for example, it appears to turn in 756p in the screenshots I counted. In handheld mode, however, there is a serious resolution drop. The range appears to go as low as 308p in very specific instances, but usually floats around the 342 to 360p range. This is around half, or in some cases less than half, of the Switch panel resolution, so it really does look quite blurry. I would say Temporal AA is one of those techniques that tends to break down at super low resolutions like this, often found in the more demanding Switch handheld games, because it adds a lot of blur to the image even at high resolutions, so at these really low resolutions the image just doesn't stand a chance. But what of performance? This is again a mixed bag. There appear to be a few different frame rate targets, while in combat or linear sections, the game aims for a 60 frames per second update, while cutscenes and exploring the open world are capped at 30 frames per second. Seems reasonable, right? Unfortunately, the game is not able to stick closely to these targets. Starting with docked mode, during linear and combat sections you're looking at an average frame rate between 45 and 55 frames per second so not quite close enough to the 60 frames per second mark to feel like a reliable, smooth update. In some sequences, like parts of this first boss fight, it comes much closer to that 60 frames per second target, but it's not locked. This is also true for the more radical gameplay sequences, such as this, where Travis fights the boss in a mech suit. Cutscenes are a bit better, they mostly stick to their 30 frames per second target, however there are still moments where the frame times can dip above or below, the 33 millisecond update required for a smooth experience, so the frame pacing isn't perfectly even. Lastly, there's performance when navigating around the open world, and unfortunately the game falls below even its 30 frames per second target here. Open worlds are notoriously difficult to pull off in very technically constrained platforms, and the game can spend a lot of time hovering around 25 frames per second here. Handheld, meanwhile, you're looking at a very similar performance profile in most sequences. The resolution is dropped significantly, as mentioned earlier, but in combat sequences this can actually result in smoother overall gameplay. See for example in this boss fight sequence which sticks much more closely to the 50s than the 40s, or this mech suit fight which hovers around 53 frames per second for much of its duration. It's a significant drop in resolution, but it does have the side effect of a slightly smoother update in handheld. The same performance profile is true for cutscenes, which again stick closely to the 30 frames per second update target, although again exhibit frame pacing issues. And, of course, traversal around the open world is again the same and sometimes even lower than in docked mode, 
which drops to as low as 23 frames per second in some areas. This really doesn't feel good to play in these instances, and it doesn't look very good either due to the prehistoric resolution. So what's the verdict on No More Heroes 3? It's definitely ambitious, and I feel like the developer has made a really good effort to try and achieve a consistent level of performance on the Switch. But it just can't quite hit the targets you need for a smooth update. It's an incredibly difficult feat to pull off using Unreal Engine 4 for this type of game on the Switch, and I think the art and design are just a little too heavy for this portable platform. It will be fascinating to see how this scales if there are any ports to different platforms in the future. And that brings us to the end of another fps -y video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, I do read all of them. And if you like what you saw, please consider giving this video a like, subscribing to us on YouTube, or following fps on Twitter. And with that, until next time.